Hi, welcome to 151 Garage. I'm Jill. I'm Sean. And today we're gonna to go over some of the things that we found when we went to Old, Old Florida. Florida. Now, a couple of the guys out there had uh, limb risers on there. And I've been looking around for limb risers for our vehicle, whether buy them or build them. Buying them is way more easy. And this place made it actually very easy. It's from Gear, Gear Shade. Yeah, Gear Shade. Never heard of them before. That's probably why. But they make a, a limb riser kit for the Bronco. At first, I was kind of skeptical on the way the placement is on some of the brackets. But we'll go through some of the ins and outs of this system when we install it and also show you some of the things that we are trying to figure out how to solve those problems. We did solve one, the other one, we're trying to test things out to see, but we'll, uh, we'll let you know when we finally get everything installed, what we came with or what we came up with to solve those uh, issues. Now, what you are gonna need is a 10 millimeter socket, a 30 Torx Plus bit, a four millimeter Allen wrench, or whatever you need for four millimeter Allen key wrench, whatever, a adjustable wrench, or it's just an adjustable wrench. Just a small adjustable wrench would be perfect. A pair of needle nose makes it easy. It's not necessary, but you do have to put on some clips, and I'll show you what I'm talking about in when we get out there. And also something, it doesn't need to be an Allen wrench, but if you have an Allen wrench set, it's a small Allen wrench that actually fits in a slot to hold the turnbuckle for moving while you tighten up the bolts or the nuts on either side. And Loctite. And Loctite, yeah. Don't forget the Loctite. Uh, I'm telling you this right now, if you don't have Loctite, I tried it without the Loctite. Get the Loctite. It really will help you out in the long run. I cannot stress you enough. If you install this without the Loctite and you torque the hardware down, you are not gonna get the movement or the benefit from being able to remove this piece. And I'll show you again how we remove it and how we install it uh, when we install the whole setup. Uh, we do have one side installed on the Black Diamond. We do have one side installed on the Big, Big Bend. Bend. They are different installs, yeah. same product, different installs, yeah. and we'll... That's because the Black Diamond has the lights that go all the way across the top, and the Black Diamond does not have anything, so it's using the accessory area. Yeah, and we'll show you what we came up with and how we solve that problem when we get out there. So, see you out there. Shit. So... Before I start this, let me say thank you to Corona's Bronco and look them up on Instagram. They're part of the Miami Dade Bronco Club. Absolutely awesome. I saw these on his vehicle on Old Florida, mm -hmm. I think it was. At the Blueberry Jam. At the Blueberry Jam, and I asked him about it, and he told me about it, and I immediately bought one for every car. So we're gonna go through how we installed it both on a regular Bronco with no roof uh, lights or rack or anything. And then the issues we had with putting it on with the KC lights. There is one thing we wanted to show you as a fix for something we found as a problem during the beginning. Uh, so first off, we'll go ahead and remove the hardware as they showed us in one of their videos. And what you're gonna do is take out these screws here. Now they are the same size. It's TP35 on both inner and outer. Now it's a screw on one and it's a nut on the other. So what you'll need is the inner portion of this. So you have a threaded end and you have like a nut side. So you have the outer threads, the male and a female version. You wanna keep the female version of it which right now I'll push this out so I don't lose it. The other one you can discard, throw in the grass like we did, or you can put it in a bag. We'll find that one later. Okay, 
So the way we have it right now is the way it lines up. It goes on the outer edge like this right here. The reason being, uh, the pin goes towards the front on the one you're gonna use that's mounted to this portion right here. Now what you're gonna do before you do anything, hold that real quick, use Loctite. Now I ended up buying this, I had it before, um, red, blue, whatever, whatever you have. It doesn't have to be anything special. Boat. <laughs> yeah. You don't need a whole lot. Put it on the outside. Put this piece like that and then thread it in. Get it started. Don't tighten it until you get the other one in there. Okay, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna tighten these. You do not need to really torque them down. The Loctite will actually hold it in place. What you wanna do is be able to tighten it down enough to where this is still loose and removable. And I'll show you why. Okay, so that right there is exactly what we want. Let me get this out. Everybody knows how to take this out. There's a little push pin on the top. It comes out like that. So the push pin is right there. What you're gonna have to do now is remove this little panel. You will use it in a second. So don't throw it away. What side of a socket is that? It is a 10 millimeter, the infamous 10 millimeter. <laughs> Now you get this piece right here. What this piece is, is it connects the cable from the top to the bottom. It's the mounting point for the top side of the cable. Now put it down there and then you put this back in place. Obviously this is the part that goes on the top, not the bottom. So put it this way. Put the nuts back on. Now, the one thing with this is it sits up a little bit higher than normal. I don't know how it's gonna look on a different color car. Since this is black, you don't see the gap underneath. On a other color car or a lighter color car, you may see a black gap underneath, which... We'll find out when we put it on the, the, the Badlands. Yeah. Because that one's a lot lighter, so it might have a, a contrast. Now, this right here is a pin and a wire. So you're gonna to have to take this off because what this is gonna go through is that hole. So you'll have to take this out. And the easiest way I've seen how is grab this and go like that. Whatever you do, don't drop this in the grass. By the way, suggestion, don't do it in the grass. Do it in the driveway or in your garage. Do it in the grass, you may lose something. Don't Another good do tip that. is to have one of those magnetic tray things. Yeah. And put it in there. Yeah. But what you'll do is put this up here through the hole. Through the hole, line it up, push it all the way through. My suggestion is put the cable or the this uh, retainer on the inside. That way it's not sticking out. Pretty simple going in. It already has like a little lip that sticks out where you can grab a hold of it. So there you go. That's in, just need the other side. So what we are going to do is run this all the way out. Jill, you wanna hold this? Mm -hmm. I got it. So you run this turnbuckle all the way out until it's almost out completely. I have it threaded in quite a bit. There you go, it's out completely. Run it in. A couple threads. Let me see the other end. Hold on to that. No, bring it, I need it. So run this in a couple more threads. So there you go. So now you have it connected to both. With this one, if nobody knows what this is, is a turnbuckle where you turn this one way, it pulls both ends in together. So the more you turn it one way, the shorter it gets. The more you turn it the other way, the longer it gets. So. 
That's why you have to start them both relatively soon. There you go. So this is the same pin as it was as the other side. Has a little look on it. Now I'll show you something we did here to make it a little bit easier for us. This goes through this back portion. Goes like that, just like the last time. Now, what we're gonna do is this hole right here is where this pin goes, it just pushes in, just like that. So what it does is it keeps it from pulling up. So if you pull this out, you can pull this up and remove it. So the reason it's important to be able to remove this is the angle of this, even though it's not tight right now, you can kind of see as you lift up the hood and we'll show you after we get this one installed, you're gonna have to remove these, at least these pins and pull them out and then undo this so you can open your hood or else your hood is gonna scrape right around the edges of this stuff. Unless of course you have something that sticks out farther. Even the big bend over there, it does rub against the side, uh, the very edge when it goes all the way up. Now put it in, put the pin in, tighten this. Now there is a hole in the center of this thing. Come over here. There's a hole in the center of this. I just have a small Allen wrench that I stick in the center. That way I can tighten it or loosen it as needed. I also have, you have to tighten up these things as you go. Now this doesn't have to be super tight. It's just enough to get the branches out of the way. It doesn't need to- Be guitar string tight. Guitar, yeah, guitar string tight. The reason being is as you tighten it, if you tighten it too much, you're actually going to pull everything in, which includes the little uh, sights that you have from Ford. Tighten these up. There you go. The one thing that we found is an issue is this right here, this small pin. So let me pull it out and show you. That right there is what holds this thing in. And it's not the pin itself. It's the fact that this cable is something I put on there. So I designed, I cut this cable out. I, I put a, a heat shrink over the cable ends. That way it kind of hides it. This is a stainless steel cable and I'll show you guys how to do that as a, at a, later on in the video. But what the problem is, say for instance, we pull this, this pin out and we drop it. There's no way to secure this anymore. Now what happens? This right here happens, it comes off. If you don't want it banging or drown to all over your car, you're gonna have to pull the whole thing off, which or you're gonna have to find it. Yeah, breaking your windshield, or you're gonna have to find a new pin. The easiest thing I found is get a uh, piece of wire. It's a stainless steel wire with aluminum uh, crimps on either end. And then I did just the regular black uh, heat shrink over it. That way, See, drop it, it's not gonna go anywhere. It's not gonna go on the ground. I don't have to find it. I don't have to go buy another one. I don't have to remove it. Just push it back in, it's there. It doesn't dangle around or anything like that. We were trying to find out something that was easy. And we did this with this one just to see if it could be done. And we just did string. But with Florida weather and the sun, this string is gonna deteriorate really quick where the steel isn't. Yeah, this is like a wax coated string. So let me show you guys what I'm talking about having to open up the hood. So before you go anywhere, I just lift, I got up. It. lift up, back up, oh, right there. You can't open it. Oh yeah. Cause, cause it hits right here. Yeah, it's definitely hitting. So what you would have to do, pull it open. 
gently lay it on the side. Very gently. Well, that's the look you're going for. <laughs> And then, of course, lift your hood up. Miss the hood struts. It I really know. is pampered. But that right there is how you would open the hood. And obviously, as you get it done, whatever it is that you need to do, yep. you reconnect. Reconnect. So let me show you how it goes. This right here, as you can tell, the slot is this way. It goes down and goes down like this line it up best you can and there you go now they do have a section right here where it is a quarter inch drive ratchet which you guys have in your bronco already in the gear mm -hmm. uh, every bronco comes with it yeah that little toolbox that you get yep. in the glove box and that right there is perfect. So they did think of that. That would be a perfect thing. You don't need an extra tool. You don't need an extra pair of pliers or anything like that. It's cinch it down. If you can't push it, there you go. It's actually pretty nice. I like it. Um, now, to tell you guys, it does not make any noise. Uh, driving down the road, I've been driving with that one and I've been driving with this one for quite some time just to see how the noise is. There's no whistling, there's no, you know, whining noise or anything like that. It's actually pretty cool, uh, pretty nice. The only thing is this cable right here, but that's a quick, easy fix. It's really nice. Uh, this right here makes it a lot easier and a lot more friendly, user friendly, so you don't lose that pin for any reason. So obviously we're gonna install them on every single Bronco because we have this one to do and then we'll do it on that one as well. Yeah, at a later date. Now, here's the problem we came up with this one. This right here is not how it's supposed to sit. It's actually backwards. It's just because this is so long or so short a distance. If I put it here at this cable, I couldn't tighten it enough to do it. So it would literally drape down like this. So what I had to do is mount it backwards. So this portion is in the front and then drill a hole in my uh, bracket up here. So this right here is where it's mounted to rather than way back here like the other one is. I couldn't do it any other way. That was the best solution and having it backwards is probably the easiest way to do it. Jill, on the other hand, is getting a totally different rack. She's not having a rack like this. She's gonna end up getting a Gobi roof rack, a uh, full roof rack that goes all the way down to here, which we're gonna have to figure out how to mount it on that. That's gonna be something new. I can't wait. <laughs> okay, before I end the video, I wanna make sure that you guys know what I did and how I did it to make the cable that goes from the one lanyard to the other. That way when you pull one out, it doesn't drop. You don't have to worry about losing it. Now the cable we have is a stainless steel braided cable and it has two aluminum uh, just wedges is what it is. Now I'll link everything down below of what I used for the cable wise and also give the link of where this is. I also used a piece of heat shrink which will cover the cable and give it more of a professional look. Now what we ended up doing, running this through, looping it through here and looping it back. Now we pay close attention not to stick it out too far because we want to make sure that it stays somewhat uh, somewhat safe where it's not going to get you're not going to jab your finger or anything now all you do here is just crimp it down now you can use different crimpers i just use this crimp it down a couple of places do the x pattern and then cut this in half right there and all this is 
as it goes. Over this like this. Make sure to cover all of it. Gives a nice professional look. And heat shrink. Heat it up. There you go. Nice professional look. Doesn't look like something that somebody made in their uh, wife's craft room. So we'll go knock out the other end. There you go. Nice cable, tight. And then when you put it through, it still has enough room where it's not gonna drag down, but it's also not gonna pull the cable out when you try to do it. So I hope you guys find that helpful. Uh, it was real simple. And also you don't have to worry about losing this piece later on. Okay. I hope you like this. The gear shade limb risers are fairly easy to install. There was some kind of issues. I don't like the way this was loose. So we did come up with a solution. So hopefully you guys will uh, find that helpful. Also the placement of the uh, connections on the top are a little bit different as well as this, depending on whether you have a light bar that sticks out like ours or one without. Now we are gonna change out this one at a later date, uh, probably after this video. We just didn't wanna do it right there, but I did show you how to do this one and what we use to make it. Everything will be linked down below as well as where we bought this stuff from. And uh, you know, again, thank you to Corona's Bronco. You look them up on Instagram. I'll put the Instagram underneath here somewhere, as well as Miami Dade Broncos. Absolutely awesome group. I followed them on Instagram. Just they got some really nice Broncos, and they take them everywhere, yeah, including especially through the Everglades. Yeah, including a old, older, like an '80s white Bronco. It's cool as shit. I like it. So, I uh, hope you guys like this. Please. You know, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and we'll hope see to see you in the next, next video. One. Bye. Bye.